You know, freedom is a very central theme to the Bible. In fact, it has been said that freedom is the central theme of the Bible. D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Giant technology companies are the left-wing gatekeepers, censoring views with which they don't agree. On today's Truths That Transform, we will get the inside story from Dennis Prager on his legal action against Google and YouTube. I don't think the ultimate aim is to kill us. It, it, it is to get rid of us ideologically. We will also talk with Family Research Council President Tony Perkins. And when speech is no longer free, that's a problem for all of society, and people need to realize that. What do you have to lose from censorship by the new media gatekeepers? Find out on today's Truths That Transform. This is Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. From college campuses to the Southern Poverty Law Center, the progressive left has increasingly relied on a strategy of labeling, marginalizing, and then silencing conservative and Christian voices. They've discovered that instead of debating and persuading, it's far easier to simply muzzle the opposition. That tactic has now reached our 21st century marketplace of ideas, the Internet. Powerful and monopolistic tech giants are acting as self-appointed gatekeepers, pushing those who don't hew to politically correct lines out of bounds and off the Internet. On today's program, you will see what conservative stalwart Dennis Prager is doing about it. And we'll share a key resource with you to help you stand up to the new censorship. As we begin, nobody is more persuasive or articulate on controversial issues than my friend Tony Perkins of the Family Research Council. I recently sat down and talked with him about the new censorship that threatens all Christians and conservative viewpoints. We probably have a fair amount of viewers that use the internet in some form, but who may not fully understand how influential social media and internet technology companies have become. Tell us a little bit about that space, as they say, of the, of the commerce um, and marketplace and how that affects us. Well, essentially, these big tech companies are holding themselves out as being the, um, uh, the new virtual public square. Uh, this is where people come to have conversations. This is, you know, in the, in the Bible you read about the, the city gates, yes. uh, and that's where people came to conduct business, to have conversations, to decide important issues pertaining to the people of that community. And that is what the big tech companies are doing with, you know, with Facebook, with YouTube. It's become the virtual public square. The problem is it's not free. Um, they are now acting in many ways as kind of the ticket takers uh, as to who can come in. If you got a liberal ticket, come on in. You got a conservative ticket, not so sure. Let's see what you've got to say. Mm -hmm. That's not free speech. And when speech is no longer free, that's a problem for all of society, and people need to realize that. Dennis Prager has argued that this gatekeeper phenomenon and the uh, phenomenon of the marketplace of ideas becoming digital is replicating what's been happening on the university uh, level for 20 or 30 years to where there, is, there hasn't been any free, true free speech or marketplace idea of ideas in a secular university for a very long time. True. And that that's being ported into this new medium in which you have no way around it. Well, I mean, that's the history of the left. I mean, they, they gravitate to try to cut off any competition. 
I mean, we, we, we've seen it in the elementary and secondary schools. We've seen it on the college campuses uh, where free speech is shouted down, if it's allowed at all. Um, and, and now the alternatives that, you know, the free market system creates, PragerU, the internet, I mean, look, uh, capitalism is, is, is good. I mean, look, it, it, it allows the free flow of ideas and people are going to be creative and they're going to find ways to get the content out there. But they are wanting to use, in many, many, many ways, they will use the government to suppress it or they will try to limit the access. They don't want a free exchange of ideas because, right. quite frankly, their arguments just don't hold water. And to that point, from a Christian perspective, we're fine with truth doing hand-to-hand -hand combat in the marketplace of ideas because, as John Milton once said, bad ideas tend to fall and good ideas tend to rise. And uh, as believers, we know that truth can hold its own in the marketplace. W without question. In fact, the truth is more appealing when it's compared to a lie. Yes. And the light is more clearly seen when the backdrop is darkness. So we're not afraid of an exchange of ideas. I'm not afraid to go on television and debate to someone on the other side of a, a political issue, whether it's human sexuality or religious freedom, whatever it might be, because the truth is compelling. Now, that doesn't mean everyone's going to flock to the truth, but if we put the truth out there in a Christ-like manner, speaking the truth in love, as Ephesians 4 says, I believe we win the hearts and minds of people. That's what they don't want. They, they, they do not want people to be confronted with the truth and be set free by the truth, and that is the power of the truth. Though the venue for censorship against Christians is new, the effort to silence biblical truth certainly is not. Dr. D. James Kennedy recognized what was happening and spoke powerfully of it. His daughter and my very good friend Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy joins us now. Jennifer, your dad saw this coming from a long way off, didn't he? Yes, he really did. To tell you the truth, I'm often still amazed at the prophetic nature of my dad's messages. He didn't claim some sort of personal divine revelation for this ability to see what would happen, but he was a scholar of the Bible, he knew human nature, and he understood the battle that lay before us. He could see the trajectory of things, and he knew how to read the times long before most others. He was deeply concerned about the loss of religious liberty and the silencing of Christians. He knew that our freedom as Americans rested upon Christian principles and that once those Christian principles were eroded, our freedom would begin to disappear. And today, that's exactly what we're seeing happen. My father, Dr. D. James Kennedy, explains more in this portion of his powerful message, The Rise of Tyranny. Today, I would like to focus on one issue, and that is the issue of freedom. Freedom in general for all of our citizens and Christian freedom in particular, which is, I believe, today under serious attack, in fact, under more serious attack by far than ever has been experienced before in the history of this nation. I think we should also remember that never before in history do we have any example of a nation losing its religious liberty without shortly thereafter losing all of its other liberties as well. You know, freedom is a very central theme to the Bible. In fact, it has been said that freedom is the central theme of the Bible. My friends, the time is coming when Christians are going to have to stand up and stand together. Well, how can such things as this happen? Why? Why can we be faced with such a loss, possible loss of freedom in this land, this land of freedom? What has happened to the guarantee of liberty? Well, Francis Schaeffer, in his excellent book, which you all ought to read, entitled Christian Manifesto points out very clearly that what we are faced with in our nation today is two totally opposing world and life views. 
we have the historic, traditional, Christian, theistic world and life view. On the other hand, we have the, the materialistic, atheistic world and life view of humanism. And these are totally antithetical at every point. And these two views are struggling for the soul of America. Well, why is it that we are losing so badly? For two reasons. One, humanism is absolutely an aggressive and totalitarian concept. It will brook no rivals in the public sphere, and it is determined to remove every vestige of Christianity from the public life of this nation. And any Christian that sticks his head up where it can be seen outside of the church is going to get it cut off if they have anything to do with it. On the other hand, Christianity is a total world and life view. That the truth that makes us free is a truth that deals with every sphere of life. The founding fathers of this country knew that the word of God had something to say about every phase of life. It was a Christian doctrine of man that separated the powers of government. And all of those checks and balances which are now being destroyed were based upon Christian concepts. Yes, it will be administered well for a while, and then there will come tyranny. And may I say again, never in history has religious freedom been lost, but that all other freedoms were lost shortly thereafter. It begins, of course, in the individual heart. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. My friends, we're now going to find that because we fail to share the gospel with others, that their hearts are committed to an atheistic view which is becoming increasingly militant and hostile to everything that we as Christians believe in and hold dear. And because we have allowed by default this army of people to grow, we are going to begin to feel the increasing oppression that they are bringing to bear. May God grant that by his spirit we may begin to reverse this trend. Because it's only where the spirit of the Lord is that there is liberty. As Dr. Kennedy foresaw, a spiritually impoverished culture, one increasingly without a clear gospel witness, is indeed becoming increasingly militant and even hostile to everything that we as Christians believe. They've tried to silence biblical truth on the airways, on the college campuses, and now increasingly on the internet. Sadly, the internet was once a bastion of free speech. Some of it good, some of it bad. But that's what the free marketplace of ideas looks like. But today, giant internet tech companies run by far-left progressives who are decidedly hostile to Christianity increasingly control the flow of information. And these self-appointed gatekeepers are using that control to discriminate specifically against Christians and conservatives. Recently, Columnist and radio talk show host Dennis Prager decided to fight back. Here's our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb with more. In 1966, Time magazine ran a cover story asking, Is God Dead? The cover reflected the fact that many people had accepted the cultural narrative that God is obsolete. This is the start of one of hundreds of internet videos comprising what is known as Prager University. This one is on God and science. I'm Eric Metaxas for Prager University. Prager University, which I founded, is uh, a producer of, of, of five-minute videos on many, many subjects, everything outside of the natural sciences and math, let's say. And it's, a, it's an attempt to use some of the finest minds we have. They give five-minute courses. It's to undo the damage of the university. That's essentially what it is. And it's become so big, we had 600 million views last year. 
not 60 million, 600 million views all over the world. And 65% are under 35 years of age. So far, so good. Prager University videos are widely seen on YouTube, the parent company of which is Google. But lately, some PragerU videos have begun to be censored by YouTube. They took 40 of our courses, and they do this regularly, they put them on their restricted list, which means it cannot be seen in a library, cannot be seen in any home with filters against pornography, think about that, and cannot be seen in any school. That's a, that's a big chunk, and they're demonetized. No ads can appear, so we get no money. And all of our stuff is free. We need, obviously, to raise money. And it's clear it's all ideological. I, I mean, you know, a film, a film, a video on why did America fight in Korea is not exactly pornographic. Here in Silicon Valley, the left-leaning gatekeepers of the tech industry and of the internet monopolies consider Christian and conservative views worthy of censorship. Why is this so dangerous? The fact is that for those under 40, often the internet is virtually the main means of communication and of commerce. In 2017, conservative radio host Dennis Prager sued YouTube and its parent company Google for censoring his Prager University videos. Google is run by people on the left, and there is no leftist who is for liberty. There are liberals for liberty. Yes. I make a leftist liberal distinction every time I talk. Prager's view in the, in the Prager University, this is outright discrimination and censorship. It's helpful to understand that one of the ways YouTube discriminates against conservatives is by demonetizing their videos. The way that you make money on YouTube is through monetizing your videos. The way that the, the videos are monetized is that Facebook, YouTube allows ads to be placed at the beginning of videos. That is not true for some conservatives who have been demonetized. So YouTube will take away the capacity for certain videos to carry ads because they're afraid that the videos are too controversial and that advertisers will get upset. So Prager University is currently in a lawsuit with YouTube because a lot of Prager University videos, which are relatively anodyne in terms of their content, have been demonetized. YouTube will not allow ads to be placed on those videos for fear of blowback politically. Ben Shapiro, publisher of thedailywire.com, explains the all-important distinction in this censorship on social media between providing a platform and publishing. One of the big questions for conservatives has been how do you deal with this? Because obviously all of these are private companies. Do you really want the government coming in and regulating them? What I've suggested is if these companies are going to act as publishers, then they ought to be treated as publishers. So Daily Wire is a publisher. What that means is we are liable for the content that we put up on our site. If we put up something that is that is slanderous or libelous, then we can be sued for that. Now, AT&T cannot be sued if we use their internet connection to put up our content because they're not responsible for the content. Well, Facebook, YouTube, Google, all of these places pitch themselves as platforms, more like AT&T than like Daily Wire, that these were just neutral platforms where you could put up whatever you want, and now they're treating themselves more as, as publishers in the sense that they're deciding what is good and what is bad. Once you start allowing any viewpoint, whether it's political, religious, or otherwise, you have to let in every viewpoint. The internet is in danger because of Google YouTube. It is in danger of becoming what the universities have become, which is closed-minded completely. I don't think the ultimate aim is to kill us. It, it, it is to get rid of us ideologically. We now have the Silicon Valley way more powerful than television ever used to be with zero regulation. They are doing what is right in their own eyes with no accountability and no absolute standard. Unfortunately, Dennis Prager's lawsuit in defense of PragerU was thrown out by the often overruled and ultra-liberal Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. This is why it is critically important for us to be vigilant on this issue. History teaches us that freedom lost is rarely regained, and there is a concerted effort to take away your Christian freedom on the Internet. We have developed a brand new ministry resource to help you understand the gravity of this issue, as well as how to respond to it. Our own John Rabe joins us now with more. John, there's something that needs to be done here, 
But the issue doesn't seem to be widely known. We're working on something to remedy that, aren't we? We are, and you're exactly right, Frank. I think people are just beginning to awaken to the danger of these new media monopolies on the internet censoring Christian and conservative speech. That's something that we've been researching now for well over a year, seeing the problem on the horizon. Next month on this program, we are uh, in the process of producing and are going to air a full documentary program on this issue. But we have developed a new resource, the book, the new gatekeepers censoring Christians in the digital age. And this is a must have resource for any Christian. It's available exclusively through D. James Kennedy Ministries. You can't get it at the bookstore. You can't get it on amazon.com. And this book really examines this phenomenon of these major media companies, some of the most valuable companies in the world, Google, Facebook, YouTube, amazon.com that are actively censoring and silencing Christian and conservative voices. If you're concerned about the future of America, as I am, and about our ability, yours and mine, to freely proclaim biblical truth to a world that is desperately in need of it, this issue is deeply concerning. If we don't stand up now, it could be too late. To help you better understand and act on this issue, we've prepared a valuable new resource that you need to have. It's the book John was telling us about. The New Gatekeepers, Censoring Christians in the Digital Age. And we'll send that to you as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free, 877-962-7677. Or you can go online to djkm.org. And John, we have another resource, a companion resource to go along with the book, something of Dr. Kennedy's own original content, which seems to me to be absolutely prophetic when he preached these messages a couple, uh, more than a decade ago. Tell us about them. We are always amazed, Frank, when we see Dr. Kennedy's messages and realize how transferable they are to the present moment because he understood. He understood the times and he could see the trajectory of things. He does that in this two DVD set of his messages called Thieves of Liberty, where he looks at the Christian foundations of America, the explicitly Christian foundations that are the bulwark of our freedom and shows how eroding that foundation can take away our freedom. That's the overriding point here, isn't it? We're talking about a spiritual battle, but a battle that has to be waged by engaging the culture which is standing against the cross of Christ. That's right. If you look at all of human history, the freedom that we enjoy in America is a very rare thing. It's a unique thing. It comes from our Christian foundations. But if we take that for granted, we will end up like all the rest of the world and all the rest of time without freedom. It's something that needs to be tended. It's something that needs to be guarded. Our forefathers understood that. Dr. Kennedy understands that, and he can equip you with the tools to uh, stand in that battle as well. Well, friends, your generous donation will also help us finish producing and air nationwide in July our forthcoming documentary on this issue. If Christians can be silenced on the internet, we can be censored anywhere. Please take a stand for freedom by helping us with a generous donation. We will thank you by sending you our book, The New Gatekeepers, Censoring Christians in the Digital Age, just off the presses. And if you're able to give a donation of $50 or more, we will also include the two DVD set of Dr. D. James Kennedy's messages, Thieves of Liberty. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free, 877-962-7677. Or you can go online to djkm.org. Recently, the case of Alfie Evans, a 23-month-old English boy, captured the world's attention. Alfie, who had a a neurological condition that remained undiagnosed, was in what was called a semi-vegetative state. His parents raised money to fly Alfie to Italy for further treatment. But astonishingly, 
the hospital refused to release him, saying that further treatment was, quote, not in Alfie's best interests. Instead, the government-run healthcare system decided it was in Alfie's best interests to die, ordering his respirator to be shut off. British courts denied all appeals. Yet surprisingly, despite being deprived of his respirator, Alfie survived another five days. All through this highly publicized case, the government-run healthcare system clearly did not consider Alfie's life worth saving. Instead, their main action was to send a phalanx of policemen to surround the hospital and make sure that Alfie could not be spirited away for life-saving care. You may recall that several years ago, Sarah Palin was widely ridiculed for warning of the death panels that would come with Obamacare as government bureaucrats decided what treatments would be allowed and what treatments would be denied. Well, few are laughing now. And our own healthcare system continues its long march toward British-style socialism. The case of Alfie raises many questions. Among them, to whom does a child belong? Who determines the value of a human life, young or old? Does government have legitimate authority over everything we do? Well, Alfie's case made one thing crystal clear. When government bureaucrats are in charge of making the most important decisions about life and death, it's no longer a question of whether government has become tyrannical. It's merely a question of how far that tyranny will take us. So that little Alfie will not have died in vain, let us remember him as an example of the danger of an all-powerful state that no longer honors the family or the sanctity of human life. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Truths That Transform. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. For all of you fathers out there, we thank you for doing your good work as an agent of God's mercy to your children. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time on Truths That Transform. Next week on Truths That Transform. I mean, when Silicon Valley controls content and controls the standards, it's going to be even unconsciously biased to the left. Paul tells us that we are to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.